So this is by way of a little advert for this product made by her and myself and also an opportunity to show you how to do some image manipulation. I'm going to use uh, PaintShop Pro and I've got here a panoramic image made by Graham Dretch. He brought his camera down to the beach, took some photographs and then has subsequently sent me this image back. It's a rather large image which is good because it means there's plenty of detail to go at. So that's uh, just giving you a quick look at the level of detail there. It's probably a bit too big for the purposes of this demonstration so I'm going to shrink it down a bit. Indeed this was the last blue sky we've seen on the beach. Uh, I'll give you I took a photograph the other day to show you what the beach looks like at the moment so it's a bit uh, it's a bit wild out there so stay in and play with the digital images is probably a good idea right I need to convert this into an image that's got a, a two to one aspect ratio as things stand it's almost four to one so this uh, gives some possibilities here so I'm going to change the image size I'm going to resize it now, if the aspect ratio is locked, you'll see that it's not quite 4 to 1, but I'm going to make it have it at 4 to 1 so that uh, it makes the operations that I'm going to perform on it afterwards work a lot better because it will mirror perfectly at the seams where it joins. Well, you'll see. It's easier to show you than it is to explain it. So I'm resizing this down to 4 to 1 exactly. The, the difference in aspect really won't be detected because there's not that many things that would give it away. The next thing I'm going to do is press Control C to copy this image and Control L to generate a new layer. So I've now got two copies of this image. Then I'm going to change the canvas size so it matches my ideal, which is a 2 to 1 aspect ratio, and make sure and I'm placing both my images at the bottom of the new canvas. So that's my new canvas. The next thing is to flip one of these images over so one of the, the one of the new ones selected so I'm just going to flip it over and you can see now it seamlessly mirrors here and also will seamlessly mirror top and bottom right I need to shuffle this around so that the horizon appears closer to the equator because that's going to work better in Bryce because when I wrap it around a sphere whatever's in this middle area will be put around the equator of that sphere and that's my intention so I'm going to uh, layers and merge all the layers into one and then effects image effects offset will allow me to move the image around so I set this up already for a bit of experimentation so I put in a vertical offset of 1000 and what that does is it shuffles the horizon up to here that's slightly above the equator but the reason I did that was I didn't want the houses poking down at the top so all I've done is moved the image around so I've got the horizon in the middle and you can see you've got this uh, reflection here so there's a symmetry line there and there's a symmetry line there now if I wanted to process this further I would try and blend out the top edge here because when this gets wrapped around a sphere that becomes the North Pole so all those things will sort of get sucked into that point it will look like pinch point because of the way this is mapped so I can't really get around that and it would take a long time to do so you just accept that uh, if you want to get a better effect you need to do a bit more photo editing work so I'm going to save this now file uh, save copy as I'll call this SM for spherical map and go OK and then I'll find Bryce and launch that so the next steps really quite straightforward hopefully uh, and that is to create a sphere so a default Bryce sphere go to the material for that sphere I'm not going to diff use diffusion I'm going to use ambience to light this up so give it a hundred ambience put uh, a blob in this channel here so the color can come in through into the ambience channel select picture go into texture source editor navigate to where I've saved my spherical map open that check out by default it will come in as sinusoidally mapped which isn't at all useful for us so I'm going to change that to spherical check out of that make sure in the sky and fog that I'm providing fully white global ambient to drive the effect I'll get rid of this infinite plane I don't need that turn the atmosphere off turn it to fully black go into the sky lab disable the Sun because I'm just using ambient to drive the effect select the sphere edit it and enlarge it to the maximum size possible so I'm now currently inside that sphere so the next bit is where the lenses and filters comes in 
I'm going to start by loading in from the object library the extreme wide angle lens that appears at the world origin and then if I select the perspective camera I'm now going to set it so that I can link it to the lens system so I've placed the camera at the origin switch to the perspective camera view keyboard shortcut 1 save that position and then I'll select the camera um, the lens sorry and I'm going to link that in the attributes to the perspective camera and that now means when I move the camera it will stay with the lens system which is what I'm aiming for so now I've got the lens system fitted you can get some really strange effects so you can see there's that pinch point where all the things are meeting in the middle I'm going to widen the field of view now and you can see you get this tunnel effect and by rotating the camera around to the right it sort of rotates the tunnel but the other thing was that if I can position it in such a way as to capture that and increase the field of view to maximum I'll tilt it round there are there are two if you like because I, I left the houses at the bottom as well so there's this other little tunnel that can be formed in this effect so if I can swizzle it back into position where I can lift the camera round so what I aim to do is get that in shot as well and then bank the camera over so we get this effect so you can see it's a sort of occurring twice thanks to the uh, the mirroring effect of the original image that was formed but this one's going to be much larger than that one this is currently at the maximum field of view that this uh, perspective camera will allow with this 300 degrees wide angle lens but what I want to do is get both these in shot so that they're complete circles and to achieve that what I'm going to do is load in a more extreme lens so I'm going to record this camera position delete the lens so you can see what things look like just through the camera at its maximum field of view so you can see the lens makes quite a bit of difference and then I'm going to go back to the world origin so that's our position in the world origin now and then I'm going to load in the gigantic wide angle lens so I've loaded that one in and I'd go to the attributes for that object and parent it to the perspective camera check out of there then go back to where my camera was and now you can see how things look with the gigantic lens so an even more distorted view of things which I think is an interesting effect so I render this out at whatever resolution I want you can see we're starting to hit the limits of the image resolution here there's just a slight hint of pixelation and that's because of the extreme level of distortion but um, I could always overcome that by producing a, a larger image a still yet larger image in PaintShop Pro I just did it on a smaller scale to speed the video along and uh, obviously if you if you rotate the camera now you get different effects Be even though the, these spots appear to be in the same place because of the extreme nature of the lens you, you you sort of rotate the horizon around here and the little horizon gets rotated around there so it's sort of like you're mixing the scene which I think is a really interesting effect to get okay then I'll, I'll probably pick a few of these and post them up and uh, and I'll call that the end of the video I hope you found that interesting and uh, that if you have this product for example then you'll uh, you'll experiment with this effect and uh, post some images up on the forum or on uh, DeviantArt for us to see. Cheers now.